turn off all the cameras now. Oh dear. Oh dear. We've lost a camera. Yes, look at this. Learn to drive in front. Caution, you are on camera. Actually, you're on around about three of my cameras at the moment. Oh dear. Here we go. Very slowly. Ah, oh, thank God she's turning left. I've just scraped the camera on the floor. <laughs> <clears throat> Didn't realise it was quite that low. Oh dear, I shall have to uh, slightly adjust that. And uh, try again. Welcome back my friends to the show that never ends. We're so glad you could attend. Step inside, step inside, as Emerson Lake and Palmer used to say. And where are we off to today? Well, I think we're gonna go off for a little jolly off over to Harwich. It's a uh, coastal port in the northeast of Essex, opposite Felixstowe, which is the biggest container port in England. So there's a few boats there. And um, I wanted to sort of talk about today. It's not a, it's not a problem. It's a very first world problem, in fact. Why do you need another bike? Well, you don't need another bike. It's this. Oh God, I've got a bike, but I feel like I need another one. I need two bikes, three bikes. I don't need two bikes. I've already got one. It's a very good one. What do I need another one for? I don't know. Anyways, I came back to biking about this time last year, which was June. And I looked around uh, and thinking about what should I actually buy? And I was in two minds as to whether go and get a sort of vintage bike, something from my sort of youth. And that would be something from the sort of late seventies, like um, a Z900, CBX, KH250 or KH750, and, uh, Kawasaki, and Suzuki Kettle, and the GT750, all those sort of things. I'd seen people riding around them and I thought, oh my God, that used to remind me of how I used to lust after these bikes when I was a kid, or well, not a kid, or I was a teenager, and I couldn't afford anything like that. It was just way out of my price range. So anyway, I was looking around and I saw the Triumph Rocket and I hadn't seen one of these before. Bearing in mind, I'd been out of biking for about 20 years. So the last bikes I'd had were a Hayabusa and a TL1000. That was 1999 stroke 2000. And I'd sort of given up biking then, but decided to come back again. So I was thinking, well, what do I do? Should I go for a sort of another Hayabusa? Um, or do I go for a newer bike? And sort of looking around, I realized that I really wanted a newer bike because there's a lot of things that have happened in the last 20 years and compared to the 1970s, a hell of a lot of things have happened in the last 40 years. Bikes have just become so much more competent. They're very much faster, very much more powerful, handle much better. They've got all the electronics, the safety features, ABS, anti-lock okay, anti brakes, um, cornering ABS, uh, traction control, you name it, they've got it on there to aid you, especially when you've got something big and powerful, which uh, this is. It's, it needs sometimes a little bit of an extra hand to sort of hold you when you go a little bit leery. But, so there we are, and I thought, right, yes. So I sort of saw the, the Triumph Rocket and I thought, the R, I like the R in red. That's the one I want to go for. So, hunted around and um, couldn't find one. Every one I went up for, it's sold. Oh, sorry, it's, mate, it's sold uh, two days ago. Uh, we haven't taken the advert there yet. Oh, sorry, it's sold this morning. Um, so I went off to my local dealership and uh, they had a black one in stock and it was a canceled order. 
and I thought oh, I didn't really want a black bike but seeing as it's going to be the only rocket that I might be able to lay my hands on easily for the next few months because obviously this is the middle of Covid and uh, as we were sort of getting into sort of lockdown period everything was just becoming extremely difficult to get hold of so I thought yeah I'll take it so I bought it and started riding last July July the 11th actually was the first day out on it anyways I decided that I didn't really want a black bike and I'd got a black bike so I had to do something about that so over the winter time I decided I was going to change the colour and in the end I settled on this white pearlescent colour and uh, with a red seat just because I like it and it stands out and the amount of people that say wow that bike looks great and the funny thing is they think it's a stock bike they think it's a normal Triumph rocket and it's a factory edition that just so happens to be white but they haven't seen a white one before they've only seen black ones uh, well I'm afraid it's not a stock one it's very unstock but apart from that here I am now on my new bike and uh, everything's going swimmingly got into the swing of the things now with it how it handles and I then I started thinking do you know I would like another bike what do you think why do I need another bike for I've already got one very good bike which handles extremely well and uh, it goes well it's got more torque than every other bike on the market it can go like a, literally a rocket as we can anyway I'm going fast here now I'm only doing like 50 60 miles an hour uh, another bike around and it basically does everything you want it to do it's new it's got all the wells and whistles on it it's an outstanding bike it stands out it's a bike which I wanted because it is different it's not the same as everybody else's four-cylinder race bike or a chopper or a whatever so here I am thinking all oh, right now I've got it but I suddenly get this urge to look at other bikes what do I want another bike for I don't know so looking around and thinking do you know I would quite like um, a vintage bike again I'm sort of thinking about the Kawasaki H2 the original widow maker the 750 triple and then seeing the price of them around about 16 to 20 thousand pounds very expensive I thought well for that price what about the new H2 you could buy one of those and you can so I started looking at a new H2 thinking hmm, maybe I should have one of those as well and then I saw it for well Jubilees that's a very very fast bike and I don't drive like a maniac I'm not a fast rider so is it really worth getting something which goes so so fast and then just to poodle around on it I mean this is bad enough here it is, I've got a bike that, I mean, this accelerates 0 to 60 in just over two and a half, 2.7 seconds. Uh, the quarter mile in 10.5 seconds, given the ideal conditions, of course. But do you need an H2? No, you don't. It was purely just to sort of say, yeah, I'd like an H2. It's the fastest bike, blah, blah, blah. Then I sort of talked myself out of that one, I thought, good. Uh, when after I got this one sprayed I realised yes this looks for bollocks this is what I wanted and then it sort of starts again you get this little gnawing thing in the back of your head thinking hmm, what about something else then <coughs> and at the moment um, I sort of have seemed to have sort of drifted into sort of V-twin territory and I don't want a Harley no, I don't want one of those. Um, I'm not a Harley guy. Oh, I like the sound of them, and I've been watching them at the, uh, the local bike meets and thinking, yeah, that's quite interesting. I quite like the V-Rod, um, but I'm not a keen supporter of sort of Harley's excessive pricing and then having to buy all the mods on it and everything else, and also what seems to be something about slightly unreliable. Thinking, well, it should be better uh, than what people are saying so I'm thinking okay then um, what about something else and then uh, someone suggests I was talking to a guy 
and he said, oh, I've got a Yamaha Raider. And I thought, Yamaha Raider, what's that? He says, it's a 1900. And I thought, oh, I've never heard of one of those. So I looked up Yamaha Raider, and it's a big V-twin. So I thought, ah, that might be something to look at then. So I sort of looked at that. And then when I was looking through some pictures of the local bike meet, there was a photographer that goes around snapping bikes. And I'd been caught on camera, literally, get past this guy here and uh, there was loads of other bikes and one of them I saw which I quite liked and it turned out to be a Suzuki uh, Intruder 1500 so I thought oh that's interesting that looks quite interesting and then I realized there's an 1800 version of it and I thought I like the look of that I just like the look of the thing sort of watch it on YouTube and the sound of it a bit more into about the engine it's a it's a really sort of uh, quite a well engineered uh, piece of engineering that is that engine so I thought that's good I like that so now I'm sort of thinking should I get a Suzuki Intruder and they're reasonably cheap you can get them for around about sort of six seven thousand pounds but it's like 12 13 year old bike and yet you can for another few thousand pounds you can buy one which is just a few years old so I'm thinking well do I need to sort of get an older one when I can get a nearly newer one so I'm sort of looking around at that at the moment and I do sort of quite like the idea of that it's it's a big bike it's slightly heavier than this it's slightly longer than this it's different there's not many around and they I do quite like them with all the chrome on there another one of the reasons why they bring this back to this is one of the guys I meet at the local bike meet has got a Honda Roon um, and these things are very rare there's only 1500 of them were ever made and um, so they're a very rare bike and in this country there's probably only around about 20 or so and he's got one of them and this one is a uh, maroon bike and uh, it's an amazing looking machine if you see one on the Roon it's fully chromed up and you think my god look at that the thing looks like a custom bike and it isn't it's stock it's out of the factory like that so I thought wow that's a nice bike and there are some available there was one for there's two for sale they're both over 20,000 pound one was 22,000 another one was nearly 25,000 so I thought yep that's a nice bike but it's going to be a 2004 it's going to be very expensive and uh, <laughs> um, I'm thinking do I really need to go that far? Honestly, no, I don't. So, I thought, yeah, let's look at this a bit, bit sort of, uh, maybe around the sort of like the uh, Suzuki Intruder or the Yamaha Raider. So we've got a reliable Japanese bike. I know people say, oh, it hasn't got the heart and soul of the Harley does that really make that much of a difference so this is my dilemma <laughs> do you go and buy another bike the problem I've got there is that if I have two bikes then I think well I don't get a great deal of time to ride one now I'm going to be getting two which one do I take out do I take one alternately do I take one because I fancy one or the other one ah first world problems they really are they really are first world problems so <laughs> this is the sort of situation I'm sort of find, finding myself in a completely made up problem which doesn't really affect anybody else it's only in my mind that I should have a second bike <laughs> oh dear but I tell you it is really first world problem so have you found yourself in a similar sort of situation where you've got one bike and it does everything you need and there's no reason on earth to actually want another one and then you're thinking, do you know, 
I really would like a second bike. And I suppose then you end up a third bike. So this all comes about from really sort of, I don't know, trying to get back to your childhood days or your youth 40 years ago. That's when you were a youth and you're out on your mopeds and you've lusted after those 250s and 500s and 750s and God forbid a CBX 1000. My God, it's the be all and end all. look up over there we'll see the cranes of Felixstowe over there and some of the uh, container ships busiest port in the UK that one busiest container port and they have all the very big ships that turn up there and as we go over here this is on the Harwich side of the river is it the river Stour, I think, or is it Blackwater? I can't remember. Harwich, a historic port. I believe it was the port from which the Mayflower set off to go to America. So, any American people out there? This is where your ancestors will have set off from. Of course, if they came from England, if they came from Germany or France or anywhere else. They wouldn't have. But it was the Mayflower, I'm pretty sure, that set off from here originally. I know it went to Portsmouth. But I think it was uh, I think it set off from here originally. And then it went to Portsmouth. And then it went to America. And there's that thing beeping at me again. Maybe it's beeping out certain words. No, it's not really. It's just saying the battery's low. And it shouldn't be because I've got a battery pack stacked to it. So how the hell can it be low when it's got a battery pack powering it? There we go. Oh, and we got a boat, Patricia. And there's some more boats. Any bootmaker. Over again. bikers here. Have fun. See you later. Well, that was uh, a rather nice little trip to Harwich there. Oh, turn that down very warm and I've got no bloody hat to stop my head from getting sunburned so luckily I put some sun cream on beforehand just standing around there I could feel my head getting really rather hot one of the uh, minor problems of being in England in the summertime you actually get some sun and it can burn you especially if you've got no hair So anyway, here we are, back on the way back. We've been to Harwich, 
and uh, I think we'll drop off at uh, Walton, the revved up tea bar, see what's going on over there. Got a slight problem with my rear camera, it keeps dropping down, so my rear wheel footage doesn't seem to be sort of going to be there much. Tighten it up as much as possible and it still just spins around. So I'll either have to take it apart, try and rough up the ball so it doesn't slip, or get a different mount. Which is a shame, it's a pain. God knows. That's a pain in the backside. The bloody camera keeps spinning around. <laughs> So it ends up sort of on its side or upside down or facing the sky or looking down at the exhaust. Anywhere above where it should be. Oh you bastard! Again they do it. They pull right across in front of you. Of course you're a bike and they're a car so you don't really have much of a choice. You have to give way. So we were saying, I'm going to fight the car, but believe me, you'll come off worse. So, just easier just to uh, say, no, I'll just give way. That's the only problem about hammering around these smaller roads, or oh, this is not bad, this one, but the smaller country lanes, is you never know when someone's going to be coming around the corner on the other side of a damn road. And if you're going fast around here, you ain't necessarily got time to break in time. And there we are, pulling into Walton, getting near the seafront. There's a biker's cafe up top here. I don't know how many people are going to be here or not, I'm not sure. Oh, there's a couple of bikes. lost a camera. Well that's a bummer isn't it? Look at that. Where's the bloody camera gone? Hmm. Oh dear. Somewhere between Beaumont cum Mose and Walton there is a GoPro 4 in a case lying in the corner of a field or a road. Yeah. Like they say, in the corner of a foreign field, there is forever England. In this case, at the corner of a field somewhere between Beaumont and Walton, there's a camera. So if you find it, there'll be a bit of footage on there. I wouldn't mind the footage back, actually, if you don't mind. So there was a slightly more eventful um, approach into Walton than I really wanted. But it was an old camera. I've had it about six, seven years. Our last poor GoPro, we know it well. So, until the next time, goodbye ladies and gentlemen, bye!